Okay, I am back. We had a broadcasting error, and this time it was not my fault. There was a technical issue. Um, again, Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. I am just going to jump kind of in where we, um, I think, left off when the camera froze up and everything stopped functioning. So anyhow, my name is Carol Garrison, and I am with Carol's Creative Escape. I have been making cards for about 30 years and working with Stampin' Up! products for about the last 10 and a half years. And I do appreciate that you've taken time out of your schedule to watch my video tonight. Um, and I apologize for the technical difficulties, but sometimes that happens when you're doing a live video. And gosh, I am not improving things as I try to get things straight on camera here. Oh, my goodness. All right. There we go. I'm leaving it alone now. Anyhow, um, I do appreciate you taking time to watch this video. If you do um, know of somebody who may like this video, the card layout, that type of thing, feel free to share that with your friend. I um, always appreciate when those shares occur um, just because I really do want to help people find their creative side and be able to make these cards and um, share them with others as well. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to set my sign aside and I'm going to show you these cards that we're going to make. Now this card design is called the squeeze box card design and it was actually um, a card that I, technique that I learned from Susan Campfield and um, this is actually basically the card that she created. There's a few little minor differences. Um, but essentially, this is her card, and I wanted to share it because it does give the Christmas card. Um, and I just loved the paper and the little bears and that type of thing on here. And when you open this card, you get kind of a double-sided thing. Here's this piece of it. And then if you flip the card to the next page, you get this piece with the designer series paper and the bear and everything. But it's called an accordion fold because this is what it looks like when it's standing up. And you can kind of see the squeeze box. It's actually called the squeeze box fold. Um, you can see where that name comes from. So there's a Christ Christmas version of this card and full credit to the layout and the design goes to Susan Campfield. And then I took it and used some of the earthen... Um, is it called Earthen Treasures Designer Series paper and created this card kind of looking for a slightly masculine sort of card Earthen Elegance this is called and it's using the copper clay um, ink color as well with a little bit of um, Pretty Peacock as kind of the accent color and then I've got these uh, ink colors so it's the Pretty Pecan or the Pretty pecan, the copper clay um, embellishments here just to add a little bit of detail. And then I did use one of the brick embossing folders as well. And then on the inside, I stuck with that Earth and Elegance and created the floral pot. And then it's just hope your day is a happy one. And again, using some of the designer series paper. So there you go with a more masculine version, perhaps of the card and again you can see that accordion fold so let's jump in and i'm going to show you how to make this card today i am using the artistically inked stamp set and the artistic dies these have been in the annual catalog for a couple of years and i honestly haven't used them for a while but i brought them in because i'm also going to be using the masterfully made designer series paper and specifically this piece down here. And I really thought the flowers in the stamp set would be a good addition to the card. So a little blast from the past, but these are still available in the annual catalog. So they are not retired items. And let's just hop in and get started on this card. So I'll give you the supplies that we need and then um, we will get going on it. I am using Melon Mambo as my primary color here. This piece of cardstock measures uh, four and three quarters by 11 inches. 
and we will be scoring it at two and three quarters, five and a half inches, and eight and a quarter inches. There's also a piece of Melon Mambo that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. Another piece that measures one and three quarters by five and a half. And then um, I'm kind of doing it by layers. We've got our designer series paper, which measures three inches by five and a half inches. And then there's another layer of cardstock that is one by five and a quarter inches. Another piece that measures two and a half by four and a half inches. And a final piece of cardstock that measures one and a half by four and a half inches. And then we have another piece of designer series paper that measures one inch by four and a half inches. Two pieces of basic white cardstock that measure one, or excuse me, two and a half by four and a half inches. And then the other thing that you'll need is just some basic white cardstock that will fit whatever sentiment you're going to use. So again, um, real quick, four and three quarters by 11 inches, scored at two and three quarters, five and a half, eight and a quarter, four and a quarter by five and a half inches, one inch by five and a quarter, uh, one and three quarters inch by five and a half, two and a half by four and a half, one and a half by four and a half, designer series paper that measures three by five and a half, and one by four and a half, and two pieces of basic white that measure two and a half by four and a half, along with whatever scraps you need to create your sentiments. Okay, let's bring up the scoring tool. And with this, I've already got my score lines pre-marked at two and three quarters, five and a half, and eight and a quarter. I don't always pull this tool out, but sometimes I do. Let me slide it down so you can actually see the, the marks there. Um, when I've got multiple marks like this, I do like to utilize it so that I can use my little markers here to create my score lines. So again, two and three quarters, five and a half, and eight and a quarter. And that is it for scoring. All right. Um, one other tool that you do need for this is um, a, a post-it note, just a um, blank post-it note that's folded in half. Um, this was a suggestion that Susan made in her video, and it really does make a difference when you're assembling the card, and I think you'll see why in just a moment here. So let's go ahead and create our folds. You're going to have a valley fold, a mountain fold, and a valley. So valley, mountain, valley. And you do want to get firm um, creases, so be sure to burnish it with your bone folder. That'll just ensure that the card will move as we want it to. So I'll burnish all three sizes, sides here. Okay. There we go. And then... What we are going to do is, for the time being, I'm going to set that aside now that it's fully burn bur burnished and do a little bit of stamping and assembly on our card. I am going to attempt on camera. I do have an emergency backup already done just in case I struggle. Not that I would ever do that when I'm on a live video here, right? I'm going to try to slide my camera down. I feel like I'm going off camera here just a little bit. I don't know why. All right, so I've got my Melon Mambo ink pad and I am using the Happy Birthday Sentiment that's in this Artistically Inked. Um, this is a pretty basic font, but it's a slightly bigger birthday font. And so I like that for how it kind of fit the layout of this card. And so I'm going to ink it up and then do my best to center it on here. That's not bad. I'm happy with that. Um, and then let's set that aside real quick. I am going to take the best wishes stamp and stamp it. Looks like there's a little smudge on that card. 
on the inside of my card. And again, this is being done with the Melon Mambo ink. And I will real quick grab my Simply Shammy here and wipe the ink off of these. Um, I do this not because it's going to, the ink is going to stain my stamps because that isn't the case. I like to clean my stamps off right away because I do have a tendency to um, get ink on everything. Hi, Julie. Thanks for joining. Had a little bit of technical difficulties here at the beginning of the video, but I think we've got everything in place. All right. And then the other thing that I did was take um, the stamp sets in here. Um, using Melon Mambo, Berry Burst, and Pretty Peacock to create some images. I also used a little bit of Fresh Freesia and Daffodil Delight. And that's how I'm going to decorate this panel in my card. Um, you can see on this one, I used that Earth and Texture set and then the cute little bear in some of the stamps to decorate the panels in there. So I kind of did a practice layout and I am going to end up trimming off some of the stamps um, and that's okay because that's how I'm doing it today. So I'll add a leaf, maybe add a leaf up here and like I said I've got just a couple random images that I have stamped. Um, I wanted to put this one in the middle of that, kind of for the center of the flower. And then I've got a few little flowers that I'm just going to kind of randomly put on. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting adhesive on the back of my um, images. I did pre-stamp these and um, pre-die cut them just because it was an awful lot and I didn't want to focus on that piece of it. You've all seen me stamp, so you know I fairly capable of doing that and I believe that each of you are as well so let me grab these leaf images and some of these I did full strength and then some I did second generation stamping and so that's how you get the slightly lighter color to the stamped images and I like to do that because it does just create a little bit of different focal point I hadn't used this stamp set in a while, and it is one of those distinctive stamp sets. And so I sort of had to relearn how to um, not over ink these stamps in order to get the images that I wanted. And that's why you're seeing some of my practice rounds on the back of my card stock. Okay, and then I've just got these little itty bitty flowers and I'm going to pull those all out and I should have one more but I'm not seeing it and that's a-okay and for these I'm going to just use my blue dots um, simply because it's a little bit easier It talked on the news this morning how we we're going to have a great opportunity to see some northern lights here tonight. That's something I haven't seen yet. Um, despite some of my camping up north and things like that. And I'm too close to city lights to actually get good views. But this summer we've had a couple great opportunities and I've yet to see them. Um, it's just the, the fields have gone further out than they normally do and it just hasn't worked out for me but we now have cloudy skies and it sounds like whatever was going to trigger the northern lights has also come in a little bit sooner than they expected and so it doesn't sound like we're going to have great viewing for that hopefully another time let's see i'm just kind of scattering flowers here and there and that's just going to be my focal point. But like I said, I want to be able to trim this. And so I'm going to grab my paper trimmer because I do need to have this fit within this piece. And so this one measured two and a half. So I'm just going to line that up. 
And then when I'm trimming odd bits like this, I like to actually put my cutting blade down in the piece I want to cut rather than coming up to it. That way you tend not to get some of the fuzzy pieces that can get picked up when you're doing this kind of cut. Like that is going to do. That's all right. I think I can fix that. That's exactly what I wanted to avoid, but we'll make it work. We'll grab some paper snips. I'm not a very good straight cutter, so I like using my cutter whenever I can. But when you've got just these little bits, sometimes the cutter just doesn't work quite as well as you'd like it to. Okay, and then the last thing I need to do is create the um, effect that I want with the punch. So I'm using the banner punch here. And I'm going to flip it upside down because for me, that's the easiest way to see where I'm lining things up on this one, especially when I'm using such a narrow piece. And I'm using this side so that I've got kind of arrows on either end as opposed to the indentation. And so what I'm going to do is I will get it lined up in the center here, but that's not a guarantee that the tip is going to be centered once it gets in there. So I'm actually looking to center it from the back side. And once I kind of have it in place and it's more, it's not that this punch is hard to line up. It's just that because I'm using such a narrow strip. So once I had it lined up, I was able to create that and then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the reverse side. And again, just working to get it lined up. That time it went real quick. So I've got these little tidbits and now I have my happy birthday sentiment with the arrows. So I actually did that live and on camera and that's pretty good for me. Okay, next thing we're gonna do now is just start to assemble our card. And the first step in assembling the card is actually putting the front of your card together. And that involves, oh, there's that last, last little fresh freesia flower. I do want to use that. It got buried in my things. All right, I think we'll just put that one right up there in the corner. Okay, now I can get that set aside. Okay, so here's where our post-it note is going to come in handy. Um, we're going to actually put this flap on the card but we don't want to put adhesive on it because this actually needs to move and be attached to the squeeze box portion of our card so this is where our post-it note comes in handy I just am going to make sure I've got this lined up very straight on here and then I'm going to add my post-it note sticky side down kind of line up that crease along the edge and then I'll pick it up and while still holding it down, I'm just going to fold that post-it note over. And what this is doing is just holding my card in place. I am going to fold that back just a little bit, but my card stock is held together. And with this card, the next step that you're going to do is just to simply run, um, whether you use adhesive or your tape runner, it doesn't matter. You just want to run a strip down the edge, and we're going to add this piece of designer series paper that we cut. Now what I have found easiest is, is I line up these two corners with the edge of the card. What you want is to end up with this layer pretty much lining up just like if you had a full card base underneath it. And then I can put it right over my adhesive and now this way my card front matches the side of my card back and I can pull that post-it note off and separate the front and back of my card again. All right, so we'll set that back piece aside and we're gonna to start to assemble. Um, this embossing folder that I used is part of a 3D pack of embossing folders that's available as an online exclusive. And this just creates a real fun kind of flowery starfish sort of a design, depends on what you're making. I would certainly have no problems using this as a starfish in a sea scenery. Um, but I've chosen to use that just to add a little pop to the card. And so the first piece I'll add 
is that one inch by five and a half inch piece. And we're just gonna center that into this open space. And we'll go like that. Okay, now we can kind of set that piece aside for right now and start working on our accordion fold, accordion fold and make sure that we get all these pieces put into the right place. So to start with, we're gonna put this larger embossed piece of paper on the first flap. So I was mentioning in the part of my video that got cut off again this week um, that we did some canning this weekend. My son has like five apple trees in his front yard and so we went down two weeks ago, a week ago I guess it is, and picked apples so that we could do some canning of applesauce and things like that. And we ran out of time while well, we still had apples available so I brought them up with me and this weekend I was able to finish that. Oh, let me tell you, that cinnamon and spice smell in my house was so delicious. Um, do you guys do any canning? And if so, what things do you like to can? We've done a little bit, kind of pickles and making strawberry jam and raspberry jam. Um, I tried peach jam once and it just, the flavor wasn't very good um, relative to the cost of the peaches. So we decided we'd rather eat the peaches fresh. So we haven't tried that again yet, um, but curious what you guys might can if you do any of that. And then the other big moment in my life this weekend was um, I, I ran a marathon with my granddaughter, but I have to chuckle because it's really a fundraiser um, for our local food shelf and it's billed as the world's shortest marathon. So um, Cece and I ran a block in the marathon they do have a water break part way through again a one week a one block race but they did have water stations set up um, and it was just a lot of fun we had four generations running in our group so that was also kind of a cool thing to be sharing um, cc and i did it last year i pushed her in the stroller this year she actually was out running and um, we've decided this is going to kind of become a tradition for the two of us at least and whoever wants to join us so that was a fun thing to do. And then I got to meet my daughter's new kitten this weekend. Um, very cute. And because my kittens were so bad last week, they are not allowed down here today. Combined with the fact that one of them stepped in some ink yesterday when I was working down here. And I didn't want to have to stop mid-video to clean off inky paws. That was... And unexpected yesterday she just jumped right into my ink pad okay so now I'm going to attach this piece to my card base which again is just that eight and a half or that four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of paper and I want it down on the bottom and centered left to right so I am going to put it just eyeballing it getting it close to the bottom there um, you don't want it going over, but you do want it on the bottom because that's what helps the card stay up so you can display it. And then to attach the front of the card, again, remember you want sides, top, bottom lined up. But it's kind of hard to say where would you put the glue on here. So I actually found it easier to just put adhesive on this part of my card. And then I took this piece and kind of held down that accordion squeeze box with my fingers, got these two corners lined up and my edge lined up so that I wasn't going over or having cardstock showing. And then I just press it down. So the only part that's attached is behind this piece. But now you can see I've got that accordion going. And for the most part, if you look at the back and at the front, the card is pretty well lined up. So using that post-it note to attach 
these two pieces or this piece to the to the designer series papers is very helpful to have that. And then last but not least, I need to add my happy birthday and I'm going to put it up towards the top because I like all of that torn paper look. And I am going to use some dimensionals um, just to pop this up a little bit. Um, this is one of those cards that is probably going to require a little bit extra postage to mail it. So beware of that. And that's more because of the thickness. Um, the weight may be crossing the line too, depending on how you embellish the card. Um, so do check before you mail it. Otherwise, it's a great one to give to somebody in person and you don't have to worry about postage or anything like that. It's always good to have a few of those on hand too. Whoops. And I am just going to put my happy birthday centered across the top here. And then when you open this card, you've got those pretty flowers waiting for you, along with the best wishes and a little peek of that designer series paper there as well. And then on the back, I did just put um, my copyright piece so that I'm able to sell this card if I chose to do so. But I didn't think this card was quite done. Now, I've toyed with, do I add some flowers over here? But I really think that's just a little bit too much, so I'm not going to do that. But this card is begging for just a little bit of bling. And we've got these wonderful glossy dot assortments that are in the annual catalog. So I'm going to grab my Take Your Pick tool. And I'm going to pull a few of these off. Sometimes with these bigger ones, this doesn't always work. And I'm just going to put a couple of the rhinestones. And I can use the different colors because these actually pick up a couple different colors in here. Um, the rhinestones themselves are kind of like a pool party, um, daffodil delight, gorgeous grape, and melon mambo. But this color actually kind of picks up whatever color is around it. And so I am going to grab that and use it as a soft version of Pretty Peacock. And now my card has just a little bit of bling to it uh, without being too much. And so now here we are with three different accordion styles, a Christmas card. I now have three made for my Christmas holiday cards this year, along with this more masculine um, color tones anyhow it is a very simple card it does help to make a couple of them to kind of get the feel for it so if you are making samples of cards to save folds make sure you try this one doing it that way um, using some of your retired or less pretty papers um, just so that you have a mock-up or a, a template that you can follow and that also gives you a chance to practice the fold um, but it is a very simple card to make, making sure that you use that post-it note to hold those pieces together on the one step. And um, feel free to use your designer series paper or embossing folders to lift things up and uh, create a way to your heart's delight. If you do make this card, feel free to post it in the comments down below. Um, I like to see what other people are creating, and I think we can each inspire um we can inspire each other when we share some of that creativity. So have a great week, everyone, and we will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.